Hi everyone, so back in Houdini 19, today I want to talk about the new Labs file cache node, uh, which uh, enables us to create uh, different kind of variations of our simulation or models and cache them to disk. Uh, like in the previous releases of Houdini, they bring more and more of uh, the different solvers and now the top network into the sub context, uh, which is makes everything a little bit easier. Um, it's not as detailed and as much options as you have when you really go into the top networks, but it gives you a, a, a really small but really powerful feature to just uh, create in your sub level. So um, I prepared this scene where I'm breaking a window of, of a house wall. Now I want to create different variations with it. And the new file cache swap gives us a really easy way to do so. Uh, so let's quickly talk about the setup. I got uh, four different kinds of geometry. First of all, my out window, uh, my out frame, uh, my wall and a ground. And I also animated a sphere as a collider. For the window, I used the RBD material fracture, which is a really easy node to create fracturing of your objects. And it already, already comes with a material type preset called glass, which gives us already the, the glass look we want. And I adjusted a few of these parameters to make it look the way I want. So then I uh, created this RBD configure node. Uh, what that does, it allows me to create a bounding box. Uh, you can see that I created one in the middle of our window and I set the uh, attribute to active. So everything in the boundary is active and the outside pieces are not active. So they don't get simulated. Uh, this gives us a little bit of a nice, nicer edge. So we, we don't, not everything jumps away and gets simulated, but we have these small fractured pieces looking out and uh... so then uh, i merge everything together to just give us a little preview on how our scene looks like so let's talk about the file cache um the main difference between the normal file cache and the uh, labs file cache is that gives you this tab called enable wedging um so by default, it create, gives you uh, an output file into your normal geolocation. Uh, then it uses the dollar OS, so, so the name of your node, and now the new versioning, so it's our version one. And then it writes the file. If we now enable the wedging, uh, they actually go with the uh, $OS, so the, the, the node name, then the versioning, and then with the wedge zero. So they uh, they also write a, a subfolder with all our different variations, which is really good to have, um, uh, to be to, to stay organized. Uh, you can of course always, always change these and fit it the, the way you need it. But this is the main difference for the output path uh, when you uh, enable the wedging. So let's say we want to create um, five different variations of our window breaking. Uh, by default, it, it, it doesn't know what kind of attributes to change to give you these different uh, iterations, uh, different variations. So you have a number of attribute. We can just add an attribute. Let's call it seed and give it a minimum value from 0 to 1. Or let's give it a little bit higher number, maybe maximum 1 to 3. So with this new attribute seed, we can now go into our, in every node we have on our top tree and adjust it. So let's, for example, say we want we have a scatter seed here and we can just write um, add and then seed and when we are in our file cache sub it, it knows where to put the seed values and it gives us five different uh, seed counts from 0 to 123. Uh, so let's 
to to actually create the variation it doesn't work with save to disk you have to save to disk in background and if we do so it asks us to save the scene yes we can save the scene and you can see that it start to cook uh, let's just wait for it and maybe i will show you what it does under the hood in your file explorer so uh, it in our geo node where we usually save our caches it creates creates the folder for the uh, with a node name then the versioning so it's our version one and now it creates a different wedges with our um, simulation so if it's done we actually can have a look at our different variations let's for example take this one okay and then we can just press on these little dots here and have different kind of variations and we can just stick to this this main frame where we can where we can uh, see a lot of detail and see how it's behaving and for me I, I really like this one so now we have five different variations and we can say okay i really like this one uh, or maybe a middle one is better yes i think i think this one's really good all right so now we can use this to give all these flip books like for example five flip books to our client and say uh, okay which one do you like best and then let's move on from there or we can just use it to if you hold middle mouse onto these little dots it actually gives you uh, these uh, these values so it's using the seed uh, 92.25 so uh, you can actually then uh, see what kind of values you need and then uh, choose another range which are closer to this value to it iterate over the mo the version you like the most and give uh, that gives you results which are close to it but still a bit different so it also also enables you to kind of just get closer to the result and uh, closer and closer uh, that's obviously not a great example with the seed value but let's say we have uh, scatter uh, points and we have a scatter points from one to five and now we can also use the scatter point point attribute in our rvd material fracture and let's say we just want to add this to the scatter points you can do that with every attribute you want um, and now let's just go and save this to disk and background once again maybe maybe we go with version 2 since it's saving in background you can already go in and just have a look oh this one looks really good i think that's really this one also so if i go to the beginning you can see that i now have five scattered points here and here i have four and then i have three and let's say we really like the um, the three so then we can now say okay three scatter points gives us a good result let's go with three delete the scatter points attribute just write uh, three scatter points in here and then we can really quickly go over each attribute and see what gives us the best result and really see how it changes the look of our uh, of our simulation yeah i hope that helped you to understand what the file cache the new file cache is doing and how you can use it uh, have fun with it and see you next time